My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. This is my Turning Your Raspberry Pi into a Travel Router 2025 edition. Now the first video I did on this about two years ago didn't require any additional hardware. The 2024 version introduced an external USB network adapter. Now the reason for that is shortly after that first video, updates to the RASP AP software that we're using kind of broke that original solution. So we needed an external USB network adapter. The 2025 version still uses a USB network adapter, but we addressed two questions. First, what if we used a faster USB network adapter? And then the second question is my most common question that I get whenever I do these travel router videos is, how do we get around captive portals? If you're coming from one of the previous videos and you just wanna know the answer to one or both of those questions, feel free to skip to any timestamp below. If you're here for the first time, first of all, welcome. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why you would even need a travel router. Why would you even use your Raspberry Pi as a travel router? And then take you step-by-step step on how to get this done. Let's get into it. First, why would you even have a travel router or why would you need one? I would say two reasons. First, the manner of convenience. If you're traveling to a new place and you have a lot of devices, especially if you're traveling with family, all you have to do is configure all those devices to connect to the travel router even before you leave. When you get to a new place, you just connect that travel router to the new Wi-Fi network and automatically all your devices are connected to the Wi-Fi network. Second is the matter of security, especially if you're on a public Wi-Fi where there's sometimes no encryption. This just gives you another layer of protection of security. And especially if you combine it with a VPN service or connecting to a VPN server, this allows you to connect all your devices automatically to that VPN service by just connecting your Wi-Fi router to that VPN service. And then lastly, a bonus reason is, let's say you're doing a video production on site, a remote location, and you need a local area network, you can just configure all your devices to the travel router. And then when you go to that remote location, you already have everything set up. So yes, you can buy a dedicated travel router, just like this GL INET here. And if you really need a travel router, especially for the reasons I mentioned before, I would recommend getting one instead of doing this solution. But why would you turn your Raspberry Pi into a travel router? Well, there's a number of reasons. First, if you already have a Raspberry Pi, let's say you use it for other things, especially on the go. Let's say it's a dev server on the go. Then this is one great solution without introducing additional bulky hardware. Then the other reason is, to get more exposure and learn a little bit more about your Raspberry Pi and Linux, and especially when it comes to networking. So I'm gonna take you step-by-step step on how to get this done right now. Let me give you a quick overview of what's going on. We have two network adapters. The first, we have the built-in Wi-Fi network adapter of the Raspberry Pi, which is given a default name of WLAN0. Then we have a USB network adapter attached to the Raspberry Pi. That's given a default name of WLAN1. What the RAS AP software does is it makes one of those network adapters a hotspot where all your devices connect to, and the other one a Wi-Fi client that connects to an outside network such as your home network or a coffee shop network. What the RAS AP software does is it routes that internet traffic from that Wi-Fi client to all the devices connected to the hotspot that it created. In the previous video, I switched these two around making WLAN 0, the Wi-Fi client, and WLAN 1, a hotspot, is because WLAN 1 was using an older protocol adapter, an 802.11n adapter. I wanted the stronger protocol to connect to the internet. Let me address the question, what if we had a different USB network adapter that's faster? First, let me say, there are only a few USB network adapters that are compatible with the Raspberry Pi and the Raspbian OS right out of the box. I was looking for something that was just plug and play and ready to go. You can find some faster ones that require some drivers to be installed. So there's a little work that needs to be done. And after a while, you may or may not see really a big speed difference. So I set out on this Panda Wireless 802.11 AC USB network adapter, which means that my built-in network adapter in my Raspberry Pi and this USB network adapter have the same protocol, which potentially have the same speed which you might think now we can just use the default RASP AP configuration of what is the hotspot and what is the Wi-Fi client. But when I use the Panda Wireless as my Wi-Fi client, 
the connection was not stable. It actually kept on disconnecting even in my home network when I was doing some testing. So in this video, I'm still going to switch up. I'm going to make this the Wi-Fi hotspot and my built-in network adapter on my Raspberry Pi as the Wi-Fi client. But maybe your mileage may vary on this Panda Wireless or other network adapters that you may choose. Here we are in the Raspberry Pi Imager software, and I'm using the latest version as of this recording. This is version 1.8.5, and we're using our Raspberry Pi 4 to, for this project. So we want to choose the right device here, and we're going to choose the right OS. And so in the previous videos, I used the light version of Raspbian, but actually we're going to be using the full version with the desktop environment. And the reason is we're going to be using that desktop environment to get around the captive portal that we often run into when we're on a public Wi-Fi or we're at a Wi-Fi at a coffee shop or anywhere else outside of our house. So we're going to go and choose the first one here, the recommended one, choose the right storage. We're going to hit next and we're going to edit our settings and we're going to edit our Wi-Fi settings. We're going to edit, make sure your host name, your username and password is set, configure your wi wireless LAN, make sure you configure your wireless LAN country, your local time. Then we're going to go into services and make sure you enable SSH. And so those are important things to enable. I'm going to go ahead and hit save, say yes. This is warning that our SD card, micro SD card will be erased. We're going to hit yes. And it will ask you for your password. And this is going to write the Raspbian OS onto our micro SD card. So let's skip ahead into when this is done. So that did take a few minutes to install the Raspbian software because we are installing the full version of it. But I have now put the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi. I've turned on the Raspberry Pi and I waited about five minutes at least to for it to boot up and join the network that we specified in the imager software. Then also we have to make note of what host name we gave. We've given our Raspberry Pi and I've named it Rasp AP. So in order for me to reach the Raspberry Pi, I can just say Rasp AP .local on my Mac, or if you have Bonjour installed in Windows, you can do that as well. Or you just need to put in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. However you find that, I'm not sure. But now we're in terminal and now we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. It's pi at raspap.local or whatever username you did. You say yes. And we're going to put in our password that we set. So now we're in our Raspberry Pi. And the first couple things we need to do is just really update our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to go sudo apt update. And this is just downloading the latest updates for our Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to go sudo apt upgrade. And this will, I'm going to go dash Y so we don't have to do any prompts. And this will update all our packages that we already have running on our Raspberry Pi. And I'll just skip to when this is completed. So the Raspberry Pi has finished updating. Now we want to enable VNC. And this is the way that we're going to be able to remote into our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to go sudo raspy config. We're going to go to Interface options, VNC, and say yes. So now that our VNC server is enabled, we can now remote into our Raspberry Pi through the desktop environment as well. So now we're going to go ahead and install the Rasp AP software. To install the Rasp AP software, we need to copy and paste a command. And you can get this command by going to raspap.com. But I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. And we are going to have a number of prompts. And I'm going to say yes to almost all of these in the beginning. And these are all the recommended. Anything that's recommended, I'm going to say yes to. And then eventually, I'll say no to some of the optional ones, such as when we're connecting to a VPN. Now, if you need this to connect to a VPN, then you're going to know which ones to say yes to. But I'm going to say no to any of the VPN ones because I don't actually need it for this purposes as well. This will take a few minutes and I'll skip to the end where it is finished loading and installing the Rasp AP software. We finished installing the Rasp AP software and let me pause a minute here. Before we go into the Rasp AP software via the web browser, you need to make sure you plug in the USB network adapter at this point. 
This will show up as WLAN 1. WLAN 0 is the built-in network adapter. Now we're gonna go into the web interface and I'm here in my browser. And so we're gonna type in the IP address or the host name that we have. Again, raspap.local. And the username and password, the default one is admin. And this is secret. So now we're in the Rasp AP software. Now we see that our WLAN zero is up and this is the one that is using our hotspot or created our hotspot. So remember, we wanna switch the hotspot to use WLAN one, which is our USB dongle and have WLAN zero be our Wi-Fi client to connect to outside uh, Wi-Fi networks. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go into hotspot. We're gonna change the interface to WLAN one. I'm gonna change this SSID to Raspi Hotspot. I'm gonna go into security and you can change your password here. I'm just gonna leave it as change me. But the other thing we need to do is change our uh, country code here. And I'm gonna change this to where I'm at right now in the US. Go ahead and save settings. And at this point, do not reboot your Raspberry Pi. We need to go back into the terminal and do a few things. So we're back in terminal and still logged into our Raspberry Pi. So we need to configure one file and we need to delete another. In a previous version of this video, there was an additional file that we needed to delete, but this version of Raspbian doesn't have that file anymore. So let's go ahead and edit the file that we need to. And in this case, I usually use Vim as my editor, but I'm gonna use nano just for simplicity stakes. So you're gonna go sudo nano slash etc. You need to have that forward slash etc. And we're gonna go dhcp cd.conf. Okay. Now, if we go down here, we have two entries here. We have WLAN zero configuration, WLAN one configuration. These configurations tell the Raspberry Pi to use WLAN 1 as our hotspot. But the WLAN 0 configuration is still there. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these. So we can go Control K to cut this out, delete that entry, Control X to exit, say yes to save, hit enter. And now we've modified that file. Now we need to delete one more file. So we're going to go sudo rm slash etc slash capital N network manager slash system connections. And there's one more file in there called prefigured NM connections. And we need to delete that file. Okay, so now we're ready to go. The way we can reboot our Raspberry Pi is go sudo reboot. Now, once we reboot this connection, the only way to connect to our Raspberry Pi is to connect to the hotspot that is creating. So that's what we'll do now. So we restarted our Raspberry Pi and I can't connect to the dashboard or interface because we're not connected to the Raspberry Pi hotspot. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it right now. Okay, so now I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi hotspot. I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh here and we should be able to connect to our Raspberry Pi dashboard now. And so there we are. We have WLAN one is up. This is our hotspot. And now we need to connect to our local area network, our local Wi-Fi, and we do that in Wi-Fi client. So this will show up our Wi-Fi connection. And this is what you would do at an actual coffee shop. So I'll show you how this works. We're gonna go ahead and put in our password, add, and then it may not connect right away, but it does add it to the configuration. And then you might have to manually hit connect. So here I'm gonna say connect. And this should show that it's connected to our home network here. And now we're connected. So now I should be able to go to any kind of website, everydaytech.tv. And now we're connected to our Raspberry Pi, which is acting like our hotspot or travel router. So now we come to the big question, how do I get past the captive portal? Captive portals are those dialog boxes that pop up when you connect to the internet. You have to fill out your name and email. You have to agree to their terms of service. You'll see this a lot in coffee shops, even in Starbucks or at hotels. So the way we're gonna get around this, and if you skip to this 
portion of the video. In the beginning, we installed the full version of Raspbian and not just the light version. So you need to have the desktop version and you need to have VNC enabled on your Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna log into our Raspberry Pi and use the VNC viewer. And so we're gonna use raspap.local as our connection, or you can use the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And now we're gonna connect to our Raspberry Pi via the username and password we set up. Now here is an issue that we're gonna come up with. Our Raspberry Pi VNC viewer shows all gray. So we need, to, we need to go back into the terminal to fix this issue and reboot our Raspberry Pi to get around this issue. Before we fix the VNC issue, you need to make sure your Raspberry Pi software is connected to your home network or to the internet. And you need to go into Wi-Fi clients in your Raspberry Pi software. When you reboot your Raspberry Pi, it doesn't necessarily automatically connect even to known networks. Here we are back in terminal. And remember, we're still connected to our hotspot and our Raspberry Pi, and we're connected to the internet. So we're gonna go again, shpy raspap.local. And here we're gonna reinstall some of the desktop UI software. So we're gonna go sudo apt install dash dash reinstall and we're going to install rasp their raspberry pi ui mods and lx session we're going to hit enter and this is why we need to be connected to the internet because it's going to be downloading these packages again so i'm going to go ahead and jump to where this is completed so we finished reinstalling those packages. So now I'm gonna go sudo reboot. We're gonna reboot our Raspberry Pi and we're, we're gonna see if that fixed our VNC issues. So we've restarted our Raspberry Pi. I've connected to the hotspot network that it created. I went into my Rasp AP software and connected to my home network. But let's say that home network is, let's say a coffee shop network, we're at a Starbucks. How do we get past the Starbucks captive portal? So we need to log into our Raspberry Pi via VNC, and we shouldn't see that gray screen anymore. Now we see a full on desktop here, and you can do this via an iPad as well. There's apps, there's VNC software apps to log in, but how do we get past the captive portal? Well, you do it like any other computer. On the Mac, of course, it pops up, but even if that window doesn't pop up the captive portal, you can get the captive portal to pop up through the web browser. On a Windows machine, you have to go through the web browser. Now, the same with the Raspberry Pi, let's open up a, ras uh, a web browser and we're gonna go to a website. As soon as you try to go to a website, usually the captive portal pops up, but since I'm on my home network, I'm already connected to the network. This has been my 2025 version of turning your Raspberry Pi into a travel router. Now I know my solution for getting around a captive portal there's not a very elegant solution. It's just a workaround, but it's really the only workaround that I can think of. Now, again, if you really need a travel router, I would say buy a dedicated travel router, such as the TP-Link I just reviewed not too long ago, or one of the GLI nets that I've reviewed as well. Now, the way some of these travel routers get around the captive portals is using something called MAC address cloning, or the GLI net actually has a built-in solution to get around these portals. Now I'm gonna do a dedicated video of getting around captive portals with using travel routers in the near future. Actually, there are other software solutions out there to get this done on the Raspberry Pi. And actually there is an out of the box solution that another company has sent me called PiFi. I'll be doing a review on that in the near future as well. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, hit that like button. Stay subscribed for more tech videos coming up. Until the next one, see ya.